So guys, welcome back to the educational series. Um, and today we're gonna to talk a little bit about how to approach a gaining phase. So we're gonna to touch base on obviously the, the factors that are gonna coincide with a successful gaining phase, being food, being rate of gain, being visual progress, training performance and all these different factors. Um, so firstly, obviously a gaining phase, our main goal is to be accruing muscle. And for that, we need a few things. Firstly, we need a progressive stimulus. And then that's obviously your training. You know, so we want to make sure that your training is progressing week on week or session by session. Um, then, of course, we need to correlate that with being in a caloric surplus. So, you know, there's there's ways to go about, obviously, you know, accruing muscle. You know, there's um, instances where you can do so in a deficit or maintenance. But in the optimal scenario to gain muscle, we need that calorie surplus. So essentially, we need to be consuming more food than our body needs and our body is expending. So that mass equation is all it really comes down to. Now, along with that, we also need to ensure that we're recovering in a sufficient manner. These are gonna be the three main factors. Um, there's obviously gonna be other things that are gonna coincide, um, but we're just gonna focus on, on these elements. So firstly, in regards to training, now the initial set point when you go into a gaining phase is important to make sure that you've got exercises you know, that you can connect well with, that you can respond well with, and most importantly, that you can progress with uniform execution. So this is where a lot of people go wrong and they just take progressive overload in a form of lifting more weight, you know, or just shifting a weight from A to B. Whereas we wanna ensure as you're getting stronger on that week to week, session to session basis, your execution is staying linear. Because if we're sacrificing form to go up in weight or reps, then we're not really keeping that consistent stimulus. So the most important thing in terms of how to approach the gaining phase is making sure that we've got an exercise program based around what your body needs but we're also able to keep those ex exercises and execution completely uniform whilst progressing. And the easiest way to do this is make sure that A, you're logging all of your lifts. So this is absolutely paramount in, uh, in, in order to achieve a successful gaining phase. Um, making sure that we're logging lifts and we're always aiming to progress that stimulus. And B, we're just staying accurate, you know, and, and this just comes down to yourself. It's very easy to get carried away with logbook and always kind of chase that progression, always trying to get another rep if it's not potentially there, always trying to add another 10 kilos on a bar if it might not be there. You're gonna get more hypertrophy and you're gonna get a, a better rate of stimulus by just staying 100% accurate. And there's ways to go around doing this as well. Checking yourself is what I call it to my clients. So taking videos of your form, watching them back, sending them to your coach and making sure that your form is linear as you're then progressing. And this is really important. So logging lifts, making sure you've got a rotation which works, which works around your recovery and essentially what you need to grow and then just ensuring that you're progressing. Now to coincide with that, we also need to make sure we're eating in a calorie surplus. And um, I think this is where a lot of people potentially go wrong as well. Now what we need to consider is, let's say you start a gaining phase and you know you need around about two and a half thousand calories to, to maintain weight. We're then gonna try and find a small calorie surplus. So the easiest way to do this is just creep calories up to 300. So we're now sat around 2,007, 2,800. Now in order to be able to know where we're going with this, we need to track data. Without tracking that data, it's very difficult to ascertain when we need to add more food, when we need to pull back. So we need to make sure we're checking scale weight, we need to make sure we're checking the visuals, and also just monitoring performance and recovery. Now, ideally, a good rate of gain in a gaining phase, and this is gonna differ from person to person, depending on genetics, depending on you know how long before they then need to diet, if you're in between shows, for example, if you're a competitor. But a good rule of thumb, I like to say, is around about half a kilo um, to a kilo per week. Um, so we're talking around about a pound rate of gain. So a pound rate of gain is going to ensure that you know we're not increasing that in a sense that we're gaining too much body fat, but we are creating that comfortable surplus, so we are increasing scale weight. And one thing we need to consider as well, and this is again where a lot of people go wrong, if you sit on one set point, create that surplus, and then just stay on that set point of food, what you're gonna find is that as your energy demands increase, which is gonna happen because we've already nailed the training element, we're getting stronger each week. If you're getting stronger each week, your training intensity is improving, and you're essentially adding more muscle to the frame, your energy demands are gonna increase because that increase in expenditure through training, through muscle, 
is going to therefore require more energy for your body. So we then need to upregulate food even further. So it's not just a case of finding that surplus and just running with it. It's a case of saying, right, well, let's monitor again, scale weight, visuals, performance. And once we get to a little bit of a sticking point, and usually what you'll find is, you know, weight will gradually be increasing. And then you'll find you'll get to a little bit of a sticking point whereby performance will stall or scale weight will stall or the visuals will stall. And that's where we know we've kind of reached that maintenance again. Because yes, we've increased food, but as you're gaining tissue and all that jazz, we're then kind of meeting that, that set point. So that's when we'd had to say, right, well, let's add another 250, 300 calories. And essentially we just keep rinsing that uh, process. It's very, very simple. Um, now the kind of the final pillar, if you like, to building muscle, as we know, is, is rest and recovery. And this is something which again, a lot of people really skip out on. You know, training's in a good place, nutrition, diet's in a good place, supplementation, um, but we're not getting adequate rest. Um, and this one really is as simple as it, as it sounds. It's a case of just ensuring that you're um, matching your recovery capabilities with your rotation itself. So how many rest days you're having. I see a lot of people training five, six days in a row. If you're training at maximum capacity, you shouldn't be able to train that far in a row. So firstly, ensuring that you're having adequate rest days. But then on top of that, just making sure that your sleep's in a good place. There's a lot of different factors that we can implement for sleep, and that's another video. But just ensuring that we're getting a minimum of seven to eight hours sleep per night. But we're also having a focus, not just on the amount of time spent in the hay, but also having a massive focus on how much deep sleep we're getting, stages three, four, how much REM sleep we're getting. And again, that's another video, but sleep is gonna be absolute paramount in terms of your ability to keep moving forwards with your, with your programming. And on top of that, a big element of obviously programming itself and continuing to move forward with a gaining phase is gonna be taking deloads or a step back. And uh, that's something that we can talk a little bit about more, a little more about in another video, but how to approach a deload is gonna be essentially just taking what your body needs to rest, recover, allow the nervous system a chance to recuperate, and then we go back in and, 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 and back into the gaining phase. Um, so those are kind of the main elements, guys. So just to recap, we've got obviously training, how to approach that, ensuring that we've got a progressive stimulus, an accurate stimulus, and we're logging our lifts on a, on a session to session basis. Make sure we're progressing that. And then we need to correlate that with food. We're taking scale weight, we're taking visuals, we're logging our lifts in the training, and we're ensuring that once we meet our energy demands and those energy demands then increase, we correlate that with more food and just keep rinsing that process. Um, and of course, just making sure that we're sleeping of course, um, and we're just getting adequate recovery. We're basing our rest days around what we can realistically recover from in terms of training volume. Um, those are the main, the, the main three factors. If you just continue to rinse those factors over a long period of time and also allow yourself long enough because training, building muscle takes time. Everyone you know, wants to build muscle yesterday, but ultimately we need to be doing these things for you know, not weeks or months, but years to develop and build a, a physique. Um, so those are the three main ele elements, guys, um, on how to approach a gaining phase that's obviously skimming the surface there's a lot more that we can talk about and um, which we will do in other topics but if anyone has if anyone has any questions as always feel free to drop them below and i'll be happy to answer them and um, we'll see you in the next one